uh, the bifilar coil at its resonant frequency produces a dielectric field and it's not only between the windings but it's radiating outwards and I guess this is due to the static magnetic field the magnetic field isn't fluctuating anymore it's purely the fluctuating uh, capacity the, the the fluctuating dielectric field between the windings and um, it's freed of its magnetic uh, components how does this look like? well you've got one winding It goes in, and then we'll take another color. Then it goes to the outside to the second winding, and the second winding follows the same path. into the center. From there it goes out and this you might call ground or negative and this positive. If we have a bifilar coil that means we've got two windings that are in series connected. So the black and the blue are separate windings. If you now provide 100 volts to a winding, then the volts will drop until it reaches the end of the coil. Just like this. In the middle it will be 50 volts, at the end it will be 0 volts. So this coil goes inwards and then it's connected to the second coil on the outside that also turns inwards. Now the windings are connected um, of the first and second coil and this provides a voltage difference between the windings of a 50 volts and that's everywhere in the coil. Everywhere between the windings is a 50 volts voltage difference. This is 0 volt, it is in the center with the blue one, and if you look at the voltage of the black one, it's connected to the, mi the, the middle of the coil and it's 50 volts. So there is a constant voltage difference between the windings, and the dielectric field is. Uh, produced between the windings. This dielectric field can be explained with a capacitor. A capacitor has two plates with a voltage difference between it. Uh, in this case we've got 50 volts of voltage difference so we uh, provide DC voltage of 50 volt to one plate and the other plate is grounded 0 volts then in between these plates will be the dielectric field and it's generated due to the voltage difference between the plates. Now the difference between the capacitor and the bifilar coil is that with a bifilar coil the plates are connected because the windings are connected. There is a voltage difference between the windings everywhere same as in the capacitor between the plates. Now to make the comparison between the bifilar coil and the capacitor complete we uh, would have to make a capacitor with really long plates so we would extend these lines and then we would connect these plates from the end of one plate to the other end at the other side of the other plate. And this is what's happening here. This bridge is the connection that I'm talking about here. 
So with the capacitor there isn't one, but with the bifilar coil there is. And that's the funny part of the bifilar coil because what this does is uh, at the same time uh, produce inductance due to uh, it's a coil at the same time it produces capacitance like a capacitor and this is a very unique for this coil and I think it's really interesting I want to show you a special effect of the dielectric field at the resonant frequency of a bifilar coil. I've got my pulse generator that drives this IGBT pulse driver uh, to uh, two serial connected bifilar pancake coils. These actually are three coils stacked upon each other. The top and the bottom coil are in series connected and are being pulsed by the IGBT and the center coil is completely free resonating with the field produced of the coils. This center resonant coil is at one end connected to the earth and the other end is connected to two diodes as seen here in the schematic. I've got one wire into two diodes and this makes the circuit that will make these LEDs burn. I will turn off the light now to make it a little bit clearer to see because they are not very bright. I will put on the resonant frequency at 645 kilohertz. This resonant coil is at resonant frequency now. I worked with it before so I know that this is correct and you can see the LEDs are lighting up and I think it's uh, quite nice because I have only one wire to supply this current and this is due to the dielectric field of the bifilar coil the capacitance of the coil is now being transferred into light. I will show you now a trick. I will uh, disconnect the other end of the coil from the earth connection. You see the lights dim. They are still a little bit lit. I can tweak the resonant frequency because the, the earth ground is now gone and the LEDs will come back on to brightness so it actually really is just one wire now it's fully disconnected it's just resonating between the fields now I will connect the earth to one side of the diodes and you can see it becomes very very bright <laughs> The other end also works. It's a bit funny. Sometimes it doesn't. So this is the earth connection. It's just straight down to earth. The water pipes. It's connected to the water pipes of the house. So nothing in between. And I can play again with the resonant frequency while it's connected with the earth we'll connect it at one side and you can see the resonant frequency is still being a part of the whole system you can tune it to its most brightest and at this time the most brightest part is at 677 kilohertz so, isn't that special? I've got a earth ground connected to it and then it lights up a lot brighter. I will look. Yeah, this is a, a very funny effect. The backside is uh, 
is open so I can connect earth there too and you can see the connections for the parallel series connected LEDs the LEDs are with uh, three LEDs are in series and then three times three series uh, in parallel so yeah it's a funny effect but it's just because I'm rounding but how can it be that it's a single wire transmission of energy and how can it be that when I connect it to ground it becomes a lot brighter again the same setup but slightly different I've got my pulse generator my IGBT coil driver to the stacked bifilar coils the top and the bottom one is in series connected to the IGBT so they are being pulsed and the center bifilar coil is freely resonating in the field produced by the top and the bottom coil uh, one side is connected to ground to earth and the other side of the freely resonating middle coil is connected to two diodes just like this schematic I've got the two diodes connected to a capacitor this has a 400 volts um, uh, ability it's 6 microfarads and um, I also have a uh, measurement here uh, with the capacitor the system now is off uh, you can see the voltage here uh, in the capacitor measuring DC with these wires and for some strange reason the voltage already is rising a little bit but I will ignore that because that is not important at this time although it's quite special <laughs> why is this happening why is there voltage rising hmm strange anyway I will now uh, put on my system and we will I will put it on a higher setting I will put it on a thousand, thousand volts DC setting and we'll put it now on and you can see the voltage in the capacitor rising rather quickly I'll put it back to 200 volts because it's not that high we'll now let it rise I've got 631 kilohertz I will lower it and you can see it lowers the voltage so I need to go higher and then it starts climbing again I'm now at 628 kilohertz and it starts rising much faster now so I'm closer to the resonant frequency now it's slower so I will go down in frequency again a bit up 170 volts 76 77 78 I think 645 kilohertz is again the resonant frequency I'll go up a little a little bit more up and starts climbing again 647 kilohertz anyway you can see there is a very high voltage now inside of this capacitor uh, it's still rising wow when I put my hand on it the voltage rises even higher this is due to the resonant circuit I change the capacitance of the capacitor I change the setting to a thousand now because I'm uh, approaching 200 if I uh, let go it will drop again due to the change in capacitance of the capacitor yes so I will try a little higher frequency no. this is the best So, 
So again, a single wire fed to through uh, two diodes and into a capacitor produces a far, very high voltage. Very interesting, I think. Now I will um, unload the energy of the capacitor and you will see a sharp discharge. We'll take one side and then I'll discharge and it's gone and it's back up. That's what I wanted to hear. You see these sparks? I will shut the lights off. These sparks, that's what the radiant energy looks like when it's very fastly discharged. But Okay, 